today we're looking at what happens to different things in water. Our fishermen use all sorts of different things in water, as our intrepid explorer Malcolm has been finding out. Looks a bit chilly there, Malcolm. Well, David, it's just a sort of nice, bright winter's day for a spot of fishing. I'll know when I've caught one because my little red and white float will bob up and down. There it goes now. Uh, missed it. Oh, I'll just get some more bait on my hook. Well, I'm using bread as a bait. I've got some lead shot on the line so that I can fish at the right depth. But the lead shot, of course, would sink to the bottom. So to ensure that I'm in the right place, I've got a float. It's made of cork, and it just drops it to the right level. And also, when it bobbles up and down, it tells me when I've got a bite. Let's have another go. Well, the bread and the weights have sunk to the right level, just waiting to tempt a fish. I hope. Got something here. I've got something big here. Just a minute, David. I've got something here. I've got... Oh, no, he's done it again. I wonder whether Malcolm floats like cork, or sinks like lead. Now, to sort out what happens to different things in water is very useful and important. We sent our science workshop cameras along to Morningside School in Hackney, where the children were doing this. The first two substances they tested were sand, and broken up bits of cork. What I'm going to do is um, take um, about half a spoonful. When I put the sand in, I'm going to stir it four times. Sand sinks, I think. Sinks. Now I'm going to do it with the cork. The same kind of thing, just I'm going to use the cork and do the same amount as I put on the sand. Next, they tested instant coffee. One more stir, I think, could do it. It's changed different colours. Some, some still floating, and some still to the bottom. After waiting a minute, they were certain. I think it's dissolved. It's So, sand sinks, cork floats, and coffee, instant coffee, dissolves. You can see how the, the instant coffee has spread throughout the water and coloured it. It's still clear. I can see through it. So, coffee dissolves. So that's three things that can happen in water. Now here, I've got some powdered clay. Let's find out what happens when I put this into water and stir it. Well, it's not floating on the top, and it's not sinking to the bottom. It hasn't dissolved. I can't see through it. It's too cloudy. And the tiny particles 
of clay are all through the water. The clay is suspended in the water. And that's what the children found out with their clay. So now we have four things that can happen in water. Some things sink, like the sand. Some things float, like cork. Some things dissolve, like instant coffee. And clay is an example of something that's suspended. Now, if we know what happens to things in water, we can use the idea. And Lillian's been finding out about that. What have you got for us, Lillian? Well, David, this is a mixture of sand and clay. Mm -hmm. And if I add it to water... Like that. And stir... You can see how quickly the sand sinks, leaving the clay suspended. There's a whole industry, the China clay industry, which makes use of the fact that sand sinks and clay is suspended. Most of the China clay comes from Cornwall, and the area where the clay pits are looks like the surface of the moon. The clay itself can be anything up to 50 metres under the ground, and it's mixed up with a granite rock. Water travelling at over 100 miles an hour is shot at the rock to break it up and wash out the clay. At this stage, this liquid is called slurry. The jets of water are remote controlled and use up to 70 million gallons of water a day. The slurry which flows down contains the china clay they want and sand and other substances which they don't need. We collected a sample of the slurry to get a closer look. This is slurry and there's the sand at the bottom. If I shake it up, like that, you can see how quickly the sand sinks, leaving the clay suspended. Now let's go back to the film and see how they separate one from the other. In the China clay plant, the slurry runs into a big tank. The coarse sand sinks to the bottom of the tank and is then scraped away by this enormous screw. The blades of the screw push the sand out of the water. The sand is carried away on a conveyor belt. The water containing the clay overflows and runs into another tank. Any bits floating around are trapped on this filter. It's like a big sieve, only the liquid passes through. At this stage we collected another sample. If we leave this sample to settle, eventually all the clay will sink to the bottom, like this. Now you may think that only the clay is at the bottom, but if you look closely you'll see that there are two layers, a darker layer called mica and a lighter layer of clay above it. Now the problem is how to separate the clay from the mica, and the way they do this is to add a special chemical. keeps the clay in suspension for as long as they need and the mica stays at the bottom and now I can separate it from the mica
All this water has to be dried off now, and we'll be left with this white powdered clay. That would seem to be a lot of trouble to go to for a white powder, Lillian. But it's used for all sorts of different things, isn't it? Yes, it's used in the making of uh, rubber gloves, for example, and sou'westers, wellingtons, paint on the set, mm -hmm. china tea service, plastic toy cars. Oh, and to give a shine on paper, like on our science workshop book. Hmm. Thank you very much, Lillian. So once you've found out what happens to different things in water, then you can use that information to test anything you like. But remember, some of them may do more than one thing. And back at Morningside School, we were testing Marmite. I think that it's dissolved, and um, most, um, some of the Marmite is stuck to the bottom, and it's changed colour. At the bottom and the um, And um, if I compare it to some of the other water, it's more like the... Next, they tried powder paint. First, they predicted what they thought it would do. I think that if I take, I'm going to take a um, spoonful, um, half a spoonful of powder paint, and I think it's going to suspend. It's suspended. Well, well yeah, it's it's some, some flowing some at the top and some a little I can't bit in the middle. Not so easy, this one. First they looked carefully at their jar, and then they compared it with the other four things they tested. I think it's suspended. Yeah, I think it has myself, but I'll um, use a magnifying glass. They weren't absolutely sure, and wanted another look. Can't see nothing in it. But I think I'll have a look from the bottom. There's bits floating around in the middle. And um, bits at the top, and it's changed colour, and there's bits at the bottom. So I think it's suspended. Think so it's I'm suspended. Why it's suspended. And that was their final decision. You could test powder paint, see if you agree with them. A science workshop book shows you what to do and how to set about testing all sorts of different things. And remember to talk about your results together. Oh, and one word of warning, don't taste anything, will you? Goodbye. Goodbye. David, have you seen Malcolm for ages? Do you think he's all right? I mean, since he fell in the river. Oh, he's why he floats. Are you sure? Well, I think so. <laughs>